Hello everybody and welcome to Forever Rugby on the Forever Sports for a bit of disturbing news and, and, and a bit of a, an interesting article really that uh, came out yesterday uh, stating that the Springboks could potentially face a consequence or punishment for a failure to meet transformation policies uh, during the 2020 season, which obviously was a World Cup winning uh, year and um, you know, we kind of sit as the, as the champions of the world, which makes this whole sort of report uh, that a little bit more interesting because you know it's hard to justify um well it's very easy to justify the selections for example that were made and how things were done given the success of the team itself um but uh it's, it's still an article that's come out we're just going to go through it and talk about exactly what this potentially mean and and maybe where um it has better points and maybe where it doesn't have better points um which is always an interesting thing to chat about now before we do that please do smash like on the video please do subscribe to as well now according to the sunday newspaper report um a comprehensive 206 page audit compiled by South African rugby union um which has been sent to the various different unions um stated that the spring marks fell short of their targets last year and could potentially um face consequences um apparently the audit is part of srb strategic transformation development for 2030 where the government has set a target for national sports bodies to field teams that consist of 60 percent black and colored players by 2030 so we've got six years um to get to that sort of uh representative numbers um it's in 2023 the spring box transformation targets were 54 percent for generic black players which includes black and colored players of whom 27 percent have to be ethnically black players um, apparently, during the rugby championship, the box team consisted of 39% generically black players, of whom 13% were ethnic black players, so obviously falling short there. And during the World Cup um, in France, the box used 38% generically black players, and up down from what you know the, the target 54% was, only 16% um, of whom were ethnic black players. It needs to, in theory, be 20 um, Apparently, the spring box are not the only team. And there were also issues that, that SA Rugby had set for a transformation where uh, teams such as the SA under 18s, the um, under 18 7s, SA schools, and the SA schools, they also fell short of these transformation targets. Now, I'm going to stop on that one point because I think that's an important point. If our junior teams are struggling with to meet the transformation targets, for example, that is going to mean the senior teams are going to struggle as well. That is where the issue is. You know, if you have your you know, junior teams coming through that are hitting transformation targets, hopefully organically, that's the whole kind of point, you know, is to try and create a system whereby the access to the sport is universal. And therefore, if you look at it, you know, it becomes a numbers game. You look at the, you know, the numbers of various different ethnic groups. The country itself, naturally, you should have a transformed team, you know, in, in theory, as long as you've got the same, you know, similar number of access to all the various people, if their transformation should take care of itself. We know this is not the case, though. We know that there are so many issues um, that are preventing, you know, genuine transformation, you know, access, resources, you know, um, the fact that majority of our national players for like cricket and the rugby come from, you know, former Model C schools, schools that are very well equipped, you know, schools which were formerly um, very sort of white dominated. And whilst demographics are changing, you know, for example, it's taking a long time to bring through a new generation of, uh, of, of sportsmen who reflect the demographics of the country. And again, I think this is the big, that's the worrying thing for me, you know, is that, it's not happening at junior levels. If we have junior levels where organically we are getting transformed team, which you know, which are hitting transformation targets without having to even think about them, we want to get that will translate long term into not having issues within the spring marks itself. Um, they then move on to the provincially, where the Bulls and the Lions have um, come under fire for the transformation record in 2023. Um, according to the audit, the Bulls team was 31% generically black in the Champions Cup and 28% in the URC. They were the lowest of all four franchises. Lions were 32% in the Challenge Cup and 53% in the URC. So slightly better than the Bulls, but not much. The Stormers and the Sharks um, are leading the way for transformation targets among the big four. The Sharks fielded 55% generically black players in the in the Champions Cup last season, but most of among the South teams, whilst the Stormers were close behind, 54%. In the URC, the Stormers had 49%, whilst the Sharks had 44%. For me, also, I think that also kind of shows you the approach of the unions, for example. So if you go and look at the big signs the Sharks have made, they've gone and picked out some of the best um, you know, players of colour in the country and, and, and given them a lot of contracts. You think of your you know, Oxen Chair, Bongi Manami, Sia Masuku now, um, when they went to got uh, Seagull more than Oche back back in the day, um, you know, you, you know, they they they're very much going targeted individual. Vincent Stuka, for example, they've gone targeted players who are you know top of the top and said, right, well, we need to meet these 
transformation targets. These are the best performing players of color. We're going to go bring them to the union and hopefully that'll really, you know, keep the, the quality of rugby as high as possible whilst also meeting transformation targets. Lions, for example, have lost uh, some of their best players of, of color the last few years. I mean, you think of a one to see the a bunch and took a nine in manuals to, for example, uh, Jordan Hendrickson. Uh, so they'd really, really struggled with, with that regard. Steve Tolling going to 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 the, the storm as well. Um, so they've had lots of issues there. Now, the big thing is, what does this mean? And I think this is the important thing. And this is where there's, as usual, a lot of ambiguity. Um, because it says that there are consequences, but we don't know what those consequences are going to be. And, and we don't know what they actually even could be. I mean, you're not going to go and sit there and, what, you know, find the coaches. They're not going to fire the coaches. They've just renewed all the various contracts and, 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 and backed them a lot. Um, so it's a bit of a, a ambiguous uh, report in terms of saying, well, you know, things are not where they need to be. Um, the question is, you know, what is the purpose of this report? Is this, for example, to, you know, basically almost sort of get the, the Department of Sport and Recreation off their back and say, listen, we're well aware that things aren't going well. We've done this report. We have recommended consequences. We are going to be pushing our unions, et cetera, et cetera, to make sure we are aligned in, in the near future. So is this a sort of PI exercise, you know, a bit of tick boxing exercise to make sure, that, you know, that, you know, that they're, that they're showing the people that they're aware of the issues and that, that they are going to actively try and improve and make sure you know, that they take steps to try and improve this. Future because apart from that, I don't really see what they can do. You're not going to sit there and uh, and and all of a sudden, you know, pull the spring box out of teams, for example, and stuff like that. You can't. You cannot touch this team. That's the big thing about the spring box, which is why, you know, there's a lot of pressure on them to get this right because they are the shining light of what can happen with the right um, administration. You know, they are two-time world time world champions back to back. They are the team united the country. And they are therefore the flagship team. And if they can get things right, then there means there's no reason why other sporting bodies can't get this right. So that's why they're under the microscope a lot, because you know they are one of our high performing teams. Similarly to the cricket team, you know, as much as they haven't won a, a World Cup, they are still one of our best performing teams and one of our most watched teams. And that's why when they don't meet transformation targets, they come in with a lot of scrutiny because you know a, a large audience and 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 a, and and a big sort of eyes on them, they are a very important team. You know, we would. I don't I haven't exactly seen too many people jumping up about looking at you know the compilation of our rowing teams at the Olympics, for example, and stuff like that, um, because this is very sort of um, uh, understated compared to these sort of main big national teams. So it's 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 an interesting one to see what's going to happen and 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 how SA rugby tackle this because you can't compromise quality, um, you know, and but there's no need in theory if you get things right you don't need to compromise quality because you're seeing generational players and generational players of color coming through um, organically because we have hopefully taken steps to start, you know, spreading the game and, and giving access to, to talent. I mean, I, I, I think, I mean, there's a weird report, which a lot of people sort of dismiss, but there was some reports saying that South Africa, you know, if you look at globally, have, you know, the top 10 most naturally or top 20 most naturally um, talented sports people in the world. Um, and I actually kind of back it, to be honest, you know, you look at how well we compete in various different sports at, at different levels, despite not having the same funding as most European countries, you know, North American countries, a lot of Asian countries as well. Um, and yet, you know, we continue to sort of um, hit, uh, punch above our weight. So it's, it's it, for me, I think it's a pretty easy thing to get right, as long as you can get the structures in place, the access in place, the coaches, the funding, you get that all in place and it'll happen organically. The problem is it's not been happening. And now there's a lot of pressure to fix things quickly, but it's not a quick fix. But because we are 20, 30 years down the line, and we've missed the first 10 to 20 years of actually doing genuine grassroots transformation. Now we're expecting the results to have been there, which they're not. And now we're looking for quick fixes. So it's a very complex issue, isn't it? Um, it's one that has to um, has to happen, unfortunately, because of the, the issues in the past. And we do want to see a representative teams across. You know, We want to get to a situation where, you know, again, organically, this all sort of just happens. But uh, what are your thoughts? What do you think the potential consequences of inverted commas might be, as well as how do we solve these issues? Let me know down in the comments below. Please do smash the like on the video. Please do uh, subscribe to the channel as well. My name is Steve.